Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and today I'm just showing off the rest of the knives that Kara and I brought back from Blade Show. So we're gonna get through them quickly because there is a lot of them. Starting it off, we have the Keto KT, which is an M390 blade in a sheep's foot uh, blade shape, titanium scales with this multicolored G10 on both sides, titanium mill pocket clip and backspacer. And you can see the, the Keto symbol back there. And yeah, it's pretty cool. My one, I have a couple little negatives, but my biggest one is I wish this fuller was sharper. Yes, I can flick it. You know, I can flick it, but it is slippery. So I wish this was um, not polished the way it is. I wish it was sharper. So then it'd be easier to flick, but it's very comfortable in the hand. The flipper tab works really good. You know, even though it is angled slightly down, it still kicks out, you know, really, really well. Access to the lock bar is not bad. And yeah, it's a pretty cool knife. So we'll be seeing it some more on the channel. Somewhat futuristic looking, which I do like. Now this next one, I actually really like this thing. So it has a really cool sound to it. This is the Tecto Knives F3 Charlie. And if you listen, hopefully... hear it it's got a really cool sound to it it's a big knife this is a full-size knife and it obviously is a button lock they tune the detent on the button really nicely it has a nice clickiness to it so like when you break the detent you can feel the you hear it, it kind of clicks out it comes open with authority and like i said has a nice sound it keeps hitting my tripod though because it's so big anyways like I said, full-size knife, D2 steel. It is assembled in the USA, so their parts are made overseas. They send them over here, and then they put them together and tune them here in Portland, Maine. See, it has steel liners and does have jimping right here. I don't know if that's coming over the camera. And then it does have a somewhat deep carry clip. I, I know it wouldn't be considered a deep carry, but it's somewhat deep carry. It does give you a little something to hang on to. It's got the multicolored G10 that's really cool. And yeah, the action is really good. The geometry is nice. The blade shape is good. This is a good full-size knife. The button lock is pretty solid as far as right now goes. We'll see how it goes, you know, as time goes on. You know how it you know, survives through use and, you know, everything else. So very cool though. As far as right now goes, I'm liking it. Next is from Beg Knives. We have a few knives. This is the Mini Glimpse. So Beg Knives is uh, affordable ways to get the Beg designs. And I think these are like around 120, between eight, between $80. I think this one's like $80, but between 80 and 120 or something like that. But I gotta say, man, they are done extremely, extremely well. Um, I really, really like the Bodega. This one has a super snappy detent, just like all of them do. They all have ridiculous detents in a good way. Snap out with authority. Beautiful drop point hollow ground blade. I love this blade shape. These do come with holes or without the holes. I personally like the holes, even though you can't get to it in the closed position. That's the one negative I will say is, man, I wish I could reverse flick off that fuller. It is a compact knife. This is not a big knife. This is going to be a pinch grip style knife considering the size. Good access to the lock bar. It is a steel liner lock. Very smooth on the drop. Not false shutty, but, you know, it is nice and smooth. Then it has the ceramic ball clip that is, you know, that bag knives are known for and a steel geared backspacer. So really cool. Yeah, I'm liking it. Another bag knife. This one is the Osteo. I think it's called the Osteo. Um, it has a dual ground Tonto with a super deep hollow grind right here. Nice and thin. This tip right there is going to dig into things really well. You're going to be able to open things up with it. It's also going to trap materials when you're push cutting. Then you have this big old belly right here, you know, where you can do cuts with that. But it is a Tonto and uh, super snappy detent again. 
D2 Steel, once again, I do think that they, or they did say that they are going to be doing uh, more steels. So hopefully we start seeing, you know, uh, 14C and, you know, I don't know, 154CM or something like that from them. But again, that detent, man, super snappy. This one's very, very smooth on the drop. Almost fall shut action is definitely drop shut T. Um, steel frame lock, or sorry, steel, I guess you'd call it a frame lock. Steel frame lock, it's it's not quite a subframe lock, but you can see how, you know, there's two pieces there. Great access to lock bar. I love how they do their lock bar access. Uh, very ergonomic, super comfortable in the hand. Again, the, the bag knives, uh, ceramic ball clip. And the fuller, once again, you can't use it on this one. I wish you could because, man, just you want to be able to use multiple deployments on this. Um, love the harpoon right here. So it's a harpoon dual ground tanto. It is definitely a mouthful. But, yeah, I, I like these bag knives quite a bit. I think they're doing a really, really good job on them. Now, I have one more, and this last one is called the Damichi. Diamichi, Diamichi, something like that. And it has two inlays, and it does come in different colors, by the way. This one's the green and black. Um, but the inlays are done really well. They're perfectly uh, flattened. You can barely even tell that they're in there, you know, aside from the different materials. It is a steel liner lock and steel scales. Again, the ceramic ball clip and super snappy detent. Once again, nice action. I believe this one, what steel is this one? I think this one's D2. Again, uh, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure it is. I don't see it on there. Regardless, um, nice and snappy. This one's more of a small, compact knife. So this is going to be, you know, a simple EDC knife. And, you know, it should suit a lot of people's size, you know, and just, you know, carry, basically. Let's get to the next one. Now, the next one is by Spyderco. Now this is a USA made knife with a compression lock. Nice little Wardenclyffe blade right there. You can get a full four finger grip for such a tiny knife. Basically a box opener, you know, or a utility cutter, which is what I, you know, I like about it. It's a knife that you can carry secondary next to your full size knife for opening things up or, you know, taking out to, to make some precision cuts. S30V steel, fantastic detent. It is fall shut when you use the compression lock, but it's also super solid and riding on washers. So very, very smooth. I think most people know this knife pretty well, so I don't have to say too much about it. Now we also got another Spyderco. This is the Spyderco Subway Buoy. Subway Buoy. It is a neck knife. It does come with a chain and everything. Not not a self-defense knife, but I, I'm not sure if that's what they were intending. LC200 in steel. I like LC200 on, made in Japan. Um, you know, I just don't think it's much of a self-defense knife because the handle's just not quite thick enough or big enough. If it was thicker, maybe. But, you know, yes, it, you can kind of palm it, and it is pretty solid, but just not quite big enough for a good grip. So that's why I'm going to say it's more of just an EDC knife, even though it's called the subway knife. You'd think, you know, it'd be a little bit more self-defense leaning, uh, but maybe in Kara's hands, this might fit pretty good uh, for something like that. But anyways, pretty cool. Now the next one's from Voss Deed. I do forget the name of it. It is a prototype, but I do believe that this is the first time we've seen a front flipper with a crossbar lock. So very, very smooth, very fidgety. I will say the detent's a little bit on the lighter side. So I'd love to see them maybe tune that a little bit stronger as far as the detent goes, which does work good for the front flipper. So I'm not saying, you know, it'd, it'd be very easy for people to use as you can see me flicking it, but maybe just a slight bit stronger. Anyway, sheep's foot blade. I'm not sure the blade steel or what it'll finally be. Cause like I said, this is a prototype, but it is in titanium with a titanium mill pocket clip. And, you know, it's super fidgety. So I think this is one that a lot of people like. It's got a great utility style blade shape. So, you know, it's going to be pretty versatile for EDC purposes. And the crossbar lock's easy to get to. You can feel it is on bearings. Extremely, extremely smooth. So, yeah, pretty cool. Now, the next one is another Vosti knife that I do not know the name of. And it is another little prototype. 
titanium scales, titanium mill pocket clip backspacer, hidden lanyard pin back there. Um, blade steel, I'm not you know sure of what blade steel it'll finally be, um, but it is a little frame lock and it's just a little, like a little gent knife kind of, you know, um, something small, compact, and you know, nothing scary or anything. You know, pretty simple, good access to the lock bar, drop point blade. There is, I'm not sure if they're planning on putting thumb studs here or something, but uh, there is that little notch out. And you see it does go all the way through. So I'm not sure the intentions behind that one. As far as the prototype goes, there is no milling on the inside, but sometimes they do that for uh, prototypes. Super snappy though, pretty cool. Next is this little knife care got from Defcon, and it is an M390. And it was like, I don't know, like 75, 80 bucks, something like that. I think it'll be a little bit more if you get it from the site because we got it. Because you always get deals at Blade Show. But it is, um, yeah, it does have titanium, a titanium frame lock with this heat anodization, and it has a bottle opener on it. Then it has this weird lanyard hole back here and back here. I'm not sure what this one's for, if it's just for show. It is snappy. It does have a decent detent. The lock bar could be a little bit better access. It is a little bit slippery because it's polished with the anodization, but it is snappy. It is only a three finger knife. I do feel all this stuff back here. So it's not the most comfortable knife, but you know, it's also just a string popper, right? There's nothing uh, you're gonna be breaking down cardboard with or anything. You're just gonna open it up and then make your cut and close it back up and put it back in your pocket. It does have a deep carry titanium clip that's very big for the knife, if you can see. But anyways, it's pretty cool. I'll link them down in the description. They do have a couple other knives that I would like to get from them on the channel. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. And um, I do kind of like this micro milling right here. That's actually pretty cool how they did that. They got some pretty cool designs and you know, they seem to be executing them pretty well. Next is another USA made knife from Shed Knives. You guys seen, we did a video um, at their booth and this is, or their knives I should say, are basically pry bars. Like they're very, very thick and robust. These are indestructible knives basically. And every single knife I've seen from them has been that way. So I would say if you're looking for an EDC slicer, don't look at these. If you're looking for something that's indestructible that you can pound and pry and break stuff with, then that would be, you know, these guys right here. This knife supposedly was built to be in the most natural position in a hand. So exactly the way you grip a knife, that's how this knife was supposed to be. And I do think it's cool. I like the way it looks, somewhat of a sheep's foot blade. It does have a hollow grind on it, but it is a thick hollow grind. Very, very thick. Like I said, these are not going to cut very well. <laughs> these are going to, you know, you can probably break down wood and things like that with them. But I will say they got a little bit of work to do, you know, to, to clean a little bit up, but you know, you can see them progressing as they move forward. So, you know, um, I, I love to see them, you know, do better and better. And then we have this knife from Baldman, Baldman EDC or Baldman Knife and Tool. And it has a very thin, slicey, magnet cut blade. This one, Karagat. And it is very comfortable, very slicey. It seems like a knife that would be very capable in uh, just about anybody's hand. They did a good, good edge on there. Uh, great grind. I do think the heat treat was like 61, 62 HRC, which I'd like to see that at 63, 64, especially on, you know, a thin slicey blade like this, something that's not trying to be hard use, but it is a fixed blade still. Sheath works really good. A little tiny bit of rattle and tap, but you know, it does work. And uh, you know, you can always put a tech lock on it or you know, however you want to sheath it to your belt or however you want to put it to your belt, but pretty cool. And uh, I like the satin finish. I do think it's ergonomic. The G10 is multicolored. They did have a bunch of different styles of this at their table. And then this last one is from T. Kell. You guys know I love T. Kell knives. It's a little worn cliff. Very stout, very thick. I do kind of wish the edge bevel 
went the entirety of this grind right here. I might wind up doing that myself, but you can see the bevel is smaller than that grind, but I know it'll make it a lot sharper, you know, and a lot more piercing. So I'll probably just do that myself, but it does have a little attitude adjuster back there. It is relatively ergonomic. Um, I'm thinking about getting one of his knives like this without the ring. So, you know, it can be just like a fist palmer. Um, but anyways, nice sheath. He does really good work. Uh, I love what he's doing over there, TKL. These are USA made. I will have everything linked down in the description from his site for you guys. This one is a neck knife or, you know, you can carry it on belt. And that's another cool thing. He has a ton of different clip and carry options. So very versatile in however you prefer to carry a self-defense knife slash EDC slash EDC style knife, however you want to carry it, he's got you covered. So like I said, everything will be linked down in the description. And then last, this is a knife that Kara had custom made, at least as far as the scales go, and he gave us one to give away to one of you guys, so that'll be, you know, in uh, the future, but this is from Spalletta Infinity. And he does have other knife designs. She wanted this little sheep's foot guy. He does have the tech lock on there, which I like. The sheath works really good. The fit and finish and, you know, his, uh, his work on his handles are really, really nice. You can see it does have a sheep's foot blade, 14C28N, I think between 61 and 62 HRC. So same thing with this one. So that's really cool. So shout out to Spalletta Infinity, and we will be giving this one away to probably one of the patrons here, uh, you know, coming up. So there you guys go. Just a really quick look at some more knives that we brought back from Blade Show. Until next time, peace.